Welcome to another episode on our channel. I actually don't know how this guy got up on the table because he wasn't here a second ago, but he worked hard to get up here. That's that much I know. Actually, I put him up here because it was such a, a great game today. It was a back and forth kind of a game between the Lions and the Vikings, Minnesota Vikings at Minnesota. And the Lions in the last minute or two were able to drive down the field and uh, through Jared Goff and was able to get a field goal and left only 15 seconds on the clock uh, for the Vikings to try to overtake them, which they didn't do. They got the quarterback got sacked and on the last play, but Jake Bates is the field goal kicker. Now this is three. I think this is actually the punter's number, but I'm going to try to, um, Jared Goff has been doing really good this year with his quarterback passing rating. And these last couple games have been just awesome. A little uh, fingernail biting today, but they, they pulled it off and, uh, so they're first in our division. Uh, we have the Minnesota Vikings, who were undefeated until today. Uh, of course, the Detroit Lions. We have uh, the Green Bay Packers, Wisconsin. And we have uh, the Chicago Bears, Illinois. So we have um, quite a diverse field. And they have traded spots over the years in terms of who has won the division. but. The Lions have done it so rarely. They've never gone to a Super Bowl. They've never won a Super Bowl, frankly, because they've never gone to a Super Bowl. They came close last year. Definitely hoping that they can do it this year. They they seem to have the pieces in place. I think they're they're really close. So anyway, so this is just a nod to the Detroit Lions who pulled it off today. Good for them. And I know you may not be a fan of the Lions, but uh, mind you, I've lived a number of years watching them lose. It's so uh, exciting to see them win. So we'll pause now and uh, give you an update on four. So here is what my husband has been able to do with the 3D resin print of four. And it is just a majestic figure. So this is the third bust. He started with Iron Man, then went to Captain America and, and saved the most challenging character for last, Thor. And it wasn't available when we first started buying the models, I think for like $5 each, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, 3D Wicked on CG Trader, when we reached out to him and said, he said he had one on its way, and here it is. He looks awesome. So we're going to put him on a tray so you can see um, him a little more vividly from uh, different angles. There are some, some uh, spaces that do need to be filled in where the items came together, but this is, this is the resin print. He will eventually be painted and silver, and then the black wash will go on. And as much of the silver that I can salvage will be protected. And, and hopefully just the wash will settle into the creases where there are visible creases in, in the figure. So we'll pause now and get him on a turn tray so you can see him from different angles. So this uh, bust is made up of 14 separate pieces that are put together. There are still some creases in some spots that we'll have to put filler in and seal those up. Uh, my husband did his best to sand them so that they would fit together nicely, but sometimes um, a model is not perfect. So we'll just uh, fill in the creases as we come across them. But here he is. He looks absolutely majestic. It's a wonderful pose for sure. Thor. 
And I do like how this particular artist on CG Trader um, poses his figures. It's very dynamic with the poses. Not unlike uh, Kota Bikia is with their vintage set of characters, Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man that we intend to place these busts in front of. Tomorrow we'll paint them silver. Hopefully I'll have time to do that black wash and it will come out nicely. So we'll pause now though and try to get some tighter close-ups so you can see him a bit better. Here is Thor, and Thor is probably my favorite bust among all three of the busts that we've done so far. So we've done, we did Iron Man first and then Captain America, and now Thor. And my husband is really thankful he didn't start out with Thor because he learned a lot with Iron Man and Captain America that then transferred over in terms of making Thor. You can see there's flowing hair and, you know, a need for a lot of structural support in, in this uh, particular 3D print resin. The resin has been um, painted in primer and it looks, it looks awesome as is. I'm thinking if, for whatever reason, if the metallic silver that we want to do in the black wash, for whatever reason, doesn't turn out well with Thor, then I think we might just go with complete gunmetal gray with all three busts. You know, I Iron Man is the one that turned out the best because it had few uh, indents or creases. Uh, and the black wash got in there and I was able to really keep the silver as pure as possible on the pieces that were sticking out, not creased in. Captain America had a texturized outfit on and the indents or the creases were not very deep. So he ended up turning out a bit crunchier than Iron Man did. Now, this guy has lots of creases, but they're deeper. So I think he'll turn out okay with the black, darker wash that goes over the silver, but we won't know until we try it. Just hoping anyway. So let's go around and just see his pose. It's so awesome. There are so many great models out there on CG Trader. And you start looking at these figures. And if you're a 3D resin printer, you can have some really nice outcomes with not very much money put into these processes. It's just time, labor, that sort of thing, structural supports, putting the figure together. This is 14 separate pieces, but he turned out very nicely. So if it doesn't work with metallic silver with a black wash, then I think gunmetal gray might be our next. Uh, choice, but I think I think this will probably work. I'm hoping anyway. So, Thor. I know you've seen Francis Edwin Brownell or Brunel before, the first Medal of Honor recipient in the Civil War. We uh, found a sideshow uniform that was Union. That was light blue. And we used automotive gray paint to change it to gray, which is apparently what the color was of the uniform. If you look at the black and white, you know this is a lighter color and they match. But if you look at his actual uniform, I guess they have it in a particular museum. The pants are a little more blue than the, the jacket. But the discussion I read regarding the uniform is that it's very likely that fading didn't occur equally the same with the jacket and the pants. And it was very likely that when, when the uniform first came out, it was color matched when new. 
And and that makes sense because when you look at the black and white, it looks the same. One doesn't look darker than the other. The other thing uh, that confused me is when I saw the first colorized photograph of this guy in his uniform, they had a brown line coming down on the outer edge of the jacket on both sides. And then uh, an orange line followed following the uh, brown line. And then here it was orange. And that didn't make any sense to me whatsoever because he had a red shirt, red hat. To me, in, in the black, uh, not black, but the dark blue sleeve, end of the sleeve. So to me, it would have made more sense for this to be dark blue, just like the sleeve, and a red line, red line here. And then black boots is what I thought it should be. And the uh, the um, gaiters should have been black from my perspective. The first colorized photo had them being brown as they had the backpack being brown. And I thought it should be black, black, black. You know, just to match everything. And, and wouldn't you know, I found a second colorized photo that basically kind of went along the lines that I thought the color should be. So somebody must have had some fashion design when they made this uniform because uh, there was some lively debate going on about what color should have been used. And one person was saying, you know, inferior dye would create different variations as time wore on. And he felt that the uniform they had from Brownell, uh, the dye was inferior in the jacket and that it should have been blue, it should have been red. These two pieces should have been the same color uh, and on and on and on it went. So we don't know for sure but there are no accounts, according to one author, no accounts saying that the jacket and the pants were of different colors. Now, there were different Zouave uniforms. The, the second fire Zouaves had bright red and dark blue. So this is a lighter, this is gray with some blue and red in it, darker blue and red. So different Zouab units, different regiments, different uniforms. But what they had in common is that they were usually quite a lot more decorative and red was a theme in the color combination. So uh, I've also fixed the hat. So we will pause. We won't get him on a turn tray. You've already seen him go around, but we will get a close up of his face with his hat on. So I breathed a deep sigh of relief when I found the second colorized photo that had the colors I thought this uniform should be made out of. So they had the dark blue border on the inside of the jacket here and here, followed by a red line. And they had a red border here at the end of the sleeves. And that made perfect sense to me. They had black boots, black gaiters, and a black backpack. Perfect sense to me. Somebody had some color fashion back then. But the uniform in and of itself, the jacket and the pants are, are very light. You know, the red stands out, but these two pieces are very light. Uh, this was the first Zouaz, or the first fire Zouaz, as they were nicknamed, because they were primarily um, made up of firefighters. So the bright red is usually a theme, but not as much bright red or bright blue as you would think. But the second Zouaz, the second fire Zouaz, since they were also made up of firemen, they were from the 79th New York Zouaz infantry regiment. They had dark blue and dark red in their uniforms and a red design down the front part of their jackets on each side. So um, different Zouav regiments had different uniforms. And this happened to be the uniform uh, that, uh, that Francis Edwin Brownell 
was from. And I just love the final touches we were able to put in, the A for A company and one Z for first Zuav, even though they were nicknamed first fire Zuav, they were technically called first Zuavs. So, and they came out of New York. So here he is, we'll just go side to side. And the A and the one Z are really just printed out of paper and double-sided tape was used to adhere them to the hat. Yeah. So didn't want to make this a separate episode, just wanted to show you the update for him. So we'll get Zora back into the picture and we'll say our goodbyes. So I had to pay homage to my Detroit Lions today for winning. We showed you updates on the first Zuav Union soldier that I had created the other day and we gave you an update on where I can't wait to get the silver on him and the black wash and I hope it works out very nicely. So I hope you've liked what you've seen. If you have, consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. In the meantime, everyone, please have a great day.